Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. It's been a long time since I put out a tutorial actually, but um, today is the day on April Fools even. <laughs> Would you believe that? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we are going to talk about some new glitching effects, which is specifically Max for Live devices, and uh, they have quickly become my new favorite glitching devices actually. Um, they are from. They are created by Ned Rush, or and are called Ned FX Lucky Sixteen. And you can get them over at IsotonicStudios.com. I will leave a link in the description of where you can buy them, and I will also leave a link to Ned's channel. Uh, I highly recommend checking him out. Uh, he has some super creative ways to create music. Um, it's not necessarily Psytrance. Um, I think it's more towards breakcore and glitch music. Nevertheless, a lot of the techniques he incorporates and shows can be incorporated into the music that I produce, but also in other genres. Also, he's just very entertaining to watch. Um, so I highly recommend checking him out. Anyway, um, I'm... Oh, oh, yeah, and I'm not at all associated with Isotonic Studios or Ned Rush. I just want to, you know, spread the the uh, the word about these devices because I love them so much. And I think they might be useful for you guys that are on Ableton. Anyway, um, we are going to go through the devices. Um, maybe not all of them, but the ones that I use the most. But before we do that, let's just have a quick playthrough on what the material we're going to use them on will be. And this will be on this group specifically. So I've got some lead sounds that are routed into the auto grid and um, yeah, you know the drill. So yeah, those are the sounds that we are going to use in the, the Lucky 16 on. Um, so these devices, they come in a bundle. So I think it's like 25 euros or dollars and you get 16 uh, devices in total, where each device has a specific effect. So in this case, it is a amplitude modulator or amplitude modulation or ring modulation, depending on how you want to look at it. And uh, what we have here is a global chance of the effect happening. So when this chance is at zero, uh, there will nothing will happen. Uh, the effect won't trigger, basically. And when we have it at 127 or at 100 percent, um, it will always trigger, and it will always trigger based on what you set on the sliders over here. So if I have it like this, let's say I press the above over here, and this means that it will have a 100% chance to always trigger a um, two bar long effect of this specific uh, amplitude modulation. This will be around 50% uh, while the other ones are zero, basically. So these are actually timings. So you got like a 16th note, eight notes, eight dotted, quarter note, quarter dotted, uh, half a bar, half dotted, I think, um, and one bar and two bars. So that being said, um, they're very easy to uh, manipulate and uh, play around with. Um, all of these devices, they look exactly the same. So if I bring out like the uh, repeat, for example, you have the same parameters 
the only thing is the color is different. So let's just try and see what we get. Um, I'm going to try with a beat repeat first. This is like a vinyl scratch, I think, uh, like emulates how DJ, you know, like scratches on vinyl, if I'm not mistaken. Um, just so you know, like you can always check uh, Ned's own video where he explains all the devices, how they work. Um, for me, I'm just going to show you like how you can use them in order to resample stuff and then, you know, reuse it in your track. Um, so let's just continue. I really like the roll. What it does, it basically applies, I think it somehow takes a snapshot of the sound and then loops it, much like a beat repeat, but it applies a volume envelope. So it either fades in or fades out. Um, but don't quote me on it. I'm not 100% sure if that's the correct um, way of describing it, but it sounds really, really nice. So you can build like these really tension builders with this effect, actually, if you resample it. Um, so it's a really nice effect. It's probably one of my favorites. Um, then you have the shift, which is also really, really fun to play around with. Same there. Also, you can build a lot of tension with it. The thing is with these devices is that they shine, they really shine when you start combining different effects uh, with, with each other. Um, and rearranging the order, maybe have two shifts uh, after each other in series or two rolls in series. And you know, like you just go crazy with the effect order. Um, so I don't really think about it too much. Um, I just try different combinations to see what works. like the pitch and the stretch the stretch worked really nice in conjunction with the uh, lucky am over here 
so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to try the Wiz, uh, which is also a pretty interesting effect. <laughs> So yeah, um, you get the point. Um, I should have recorded this, but I have a bunch of material already that I recorded from previous sessions. Um, but don't forget to record the output because this is like chance-based. Like sure, you can control um, how often it should proc and everything, but like what happens, like uh, sometimes a pitch goes up, sometimes a pitch goes down, for example, on this one. That one you can't control. Um, but you can control how often it should trigger and, and over the duration, how long it should be active, so to speak. So, so don't forget to record the output um, when you're playing around with these. Anyway, um, that's all I wanted to show. Um, I know I didn't go through all the devices, um, but that doesn't really matter because you can check it out on NetFX, uh, or not NetFX, on Ned's YouTube channel. Um, a little fair warning though, there are two devices which I find that can be a little bit dangerous uh, in the sense that they can get really, really loud. And that is the flanger and also the distortion. So if you play around with these two, just make sure you have a limiter um, and um, just, you know, be careful uh, because it can get really, really loud. So as you can see here, I have a limiter on my master. So if something would would happen, it will probably save save my ears and my gear, of course. So anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, don't forget to check out the channel um, and check the description for all the links. See you in the next one.